Welcome back to another Torch review. Today I have the Rofist TR18 in for testing. This is a brand new model out from the company. I've just got all the items laid out that you get in the pack here. You get the additional spare O-rings, there's the screw-on magnetic cap, and there's a holster and strap included too. Quick look at the front of the box, we'll see the Cree XPL High V3 LED at 1100 lumens. On the side, take note of some of these settings, you'll see the uh, maximum distance range on this and the candela rating is quite low, so we're expecting a floody light off of this particular torch. On the back, we have some more detailed specs. There are a couple of typos that I spotted here. Not a big deal, but it's worth pointing that out. To find the actual run times, we'll have to go into the user manual on this. There isn't anything on the box. Running through the user manual, pretty straightforward and simple, the operation on this torch. We have a single button, so it works off of the press and hold method, similar to the Olight torches. Now, the ratings for the power are listed here, and the run times are approximate. Do note there is a bit of a gap between the turbo and the high, and the turbo setting does drop down um, to around about 500 lumens after a short time. This part here just goes over the head rotation and other operations of the torch opening up the supplied holster. It's quite a nice quality one. On the back we have a D-ring and there's a popper closing for this. Some makers use Velcro, some with poppers, and you have the belt loop section there which is sewn in too. Fitting the torch as you'd expect, it's a nice fit. Closing with the Velcro front. There is one advantage with this type of torch with the swivel head, you can rotate it around and leave it in the holster so if you could wear that on your belt and project the torch not something you can do on many torches looking at the case very nice quality as you'd expect it's a type 3 hard anodized aluminium and we're just attaching the magnetic base now you can also use the screw thread for a tripod mount if you wish the reflector is a dimpled effect or orange peel and it's quite a shallow size as well so that will contribute towards the flood effect Looking at the top section of the head, when you rotate this around into an L shape, it does have a sort of click mechanism there, so you can feel it hitting that point, and then you can continue to rotate it around. Uh, it's 150 degrees, not quite 180, but it could be potentially quite useful. It's much easier to turn than the TR20 was, which is extremely stiff. I think they've got it about right on the feel and the rotation on the head. Opening up the bottom section, we have the Rofus branded battery, which is fitted, and this came in just under the 3,400 milliamps an hour. These are usually relabeled uh, Panasonic cells or other high-end brands, um, so that's exactly as I'd expect for this particular battery. It's a protected cell, good quality. On the bottom section, you'll see a cutout area for the hand strap, and the clip can also be removed and rotated too. We have gold-plated springs inside and on the base cap. Now operation on this is just a single button, so you push and hold, very similar to the Olight torches that I've used to cycle through the power levels. It doesn't take too long to get used to. You also have the battery indicator there on the power switch. That's just in the moonlight mode. You can activate that by pushing and holding. And then if you double press, you'll access the strobe modes. And if you push and hold in again, you can cycle through those. So push and hold, then release, and it goes on to the next mode. Operation works okay, just takes a little bit of time getting used to it. Now I have the TR20 in next to this, so you can see the size difference. It's quite a bit shorter on the TR18. And looking at the top reflectors, they're quite different. Smooth on the TR20, and it's deeper. So we'll have more throw and more intensity on the TR20 based on this. Also, we have the micro USB charging port on the TR20. You don't have any micro USB port on the TR18. Quick side view of both torches. You can see the differences here. The TR20 has two buttons that you can cycle through the power mode with. You get instant access to Turbo 2 compared to the single button on the TR18. So I slightly prefer the TR20 in that regard, but they're quite similar in terms of design. Looking at the power output on the TR20, the specs here, you'll see we have six power modes and it's a more even distribution. The TR20 can also run for a bit longer in the turbo mode setting. 
testing the unit it's rated to ipx8 which means it's water resistant and can be submerged in water so you'll have no problems with durability on this side of things now the magnetic base is quite useful and um, particularly as the fact you can articulate the head as well so if you're working on cars or something like that at night in a workshop this could be a pretty handy torch to have i would perhaps make the base um, dimpled effect to give it a bit more grip on smooth surfaces but it is quite a useful feature to have this is just testing the moonlight mode on the TR18 first. As you can see, it's quite low, perhaps not as low as some might prefer. This is the TR20 now, which is a bit brighter. Um, some people prefer a super low one lumens mode, but it's an improvement perhaps. Now we're looking at the 18 versus the 20. We have the 18 on the left, and you can see a more diffused um, spotlight. The TR20 has a brighter hot spot in the middle. This is the SOS modes I'm going through. This is the beacon to start off with, first of all. This just flashes in an interval period. And now we're moving on to the SOS itself. The three pulses, three shorter and three longer pulses. And then on to the standard strobe mode, which is faster and slower flashes. Rofus have the um, SOS mode is well covered on this torch, perhaps better than most makers, you have a choice of three. This is the anti-lost light which flashes incrementally every couple of seconds. It's a nice feature to have and bar very tall grass you'll probably be able to find it. Now I'm on the TR18 and I'm cycling through the power modes. We've been joined by a couple of my cats as well for this test, they were quite curious. You can see, pay attention to the lower part of the picture as well, where you'll see there is a big spread in the front area, and I'm going to compare this to the TR20. So it's illuminating a large area. Now onto the TR20, cycling through the power settings on this torch. The extra sixth setting is quite useful for this, I find, and we're up to the turbo. You can see the circular image, and it's not illuminating the uh, as wider area or as much as the foreground as the TR18 is, but it has more intensity in the actual illumination pattern. Now I'm comparing the two, the 18 first, and now onto the 20. You can see the 20 appears a fair bit brighter, but it's not got the spread that the 18 has. Really this will come down to your own personal preference. They're quite different in terms of the beam pattern and they might suit specific tasks better. Um, so you'll have to make a choice based on that. Um, here we are zooming in a bit. We started with the 18, we're on the 20 now. And then I'm gonna switch back to the 18. The difference is perhaps a bit more obvious on the camera than it is in real life, but um, certainly the intensity is quite different between these two torches. Here we are with the two compared at closer distance. You can see the hotspot there on the TR20. It's quite bright in the middle, whereas it's much more diffused on the TR18. This is a wider angle test that I'm doing. I'm switching between the 18 and now I'm on to the 20. Same pattern again is repeated. You can see the floodier light with the 18 giving a big area of illumination. You can see it's slightly better in person with the 20 giving a more concentrated further range in the middle. This is another test that I'm doing on a tree, longer range. I'm on the 18, switching to the 20, and you can see again brighter in the central area on the 20. And the 20 isn't a particularly uh, concentrated beam torch, certainly compared to some of the tactical. It's, I would describe as a mid balance between the two, between throw and spread. We're on the TR18 now. This is a longer distance of around about 100 foot, cycling through the power settings. It does take a little while to get used to the push and hold, but if you've used the Olight torches, you'll find it fairly intuitive. As it's a single button, it's um, perhaps a little bit less intuitive to use than the TR20. We're on the TR20 now at the turbo mode. And it's a balance between uh, throw and spread on the TR20, so it's a sort of mid-range, whereas the TR18 is very much with the flood light effect. 
Now I'm just switching between the two models. I'm on the 18 and going to the 20. You should clearly be able to see the difference between the two. Pay attention to the peripheral edges. You'll see slightly better illumination on the 18. And then I'm back on to the 20. These are both nice torches. Um, it's really down to what you particularly want to use them for. For general purpose, the 20 might be my choice, but the 18 could work quite well for um, specific applications such as camping or working at night. Wrapping up with a quick summary and conclusion on the TR18, I'll start with the potential negatives. There is no built-in micro USB charging. That's not a problem for me. I have tons of chargers and batteries, but if you're just buying a single torch, it might be something to consider. I did contact the maker on this and they said that it was done um, not for the size of the torch, but it was done to keep the cost down. This is about £15 cheaper than the TR20 models, but they said there will be an option available for that later on, so perhaps there'll be a, a screw in section that you can use. I'd also perhaps like a slightly more even power setting spread on this particular model. On to the good points, the swivel head is excellent, it's much improved over the TR20. You have a further 150 degree rotation and it's not as stiff as it was on the older model. Also the compact size is quite useful as a pocket torch. The TR20 was possibly a bit on the long side so this could work quite well if you want to keep the size down. The strobe modes are also very welcomed as is the magnetic base and tripod thread. So I hope you found the review useful. You can compare it to my other torch reviews that I've done so you can see how they stack up with regards to the design and the beam patterns on these torches which are all quite different some of them. If you have any questions just drop me a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible.